Hello, I'm Lindsay and I'm going to talk to you about the difference between dry docking solutions and underwater hull covers. There's a lot of confusion about what they are and hopefully this shortish report will help you understand the differences between them and help you make your mind up if you're actually trying to choose a solution. So we're looking at dry docking systems and underwater hull covers and we'll be focusing on you know, what's the benefits of each, what's the cost of each, how easy is the implementation for example, and then what is the maintenance of them. So let's start with the underwater hull covers first. So it's really important to understand that these are not dry docking solutions. People often think they are, but they're not actually dry docking solutions. So for example, this one that I'm stood in front of here, this is docky dock. Now that covers the boats from underneath. And what some people actually think is, well, I need to drain the water out of that, but you don't need to drain the water out of a docky dock, so that's one benefit. If you think that anything's going to grow in that water, then no, it won't. It, for example, if you took a bucket of seawater and brought that out, is anything going to grow in it? No, because there's no flow of movement of water. There's nothing in there to feed for barnacles to grow. So the same... Uh, essence applies to the docky dock and the water inside the docky dock. It's a very small container in a way, so nothing will grow. So whether water is left in or whether it's pumped out, and that's due to the, the choice of the owner, it really makes no difference. So I would say keep your life easy, leave water in if you're going to choose this type of solution. There's no flow of water in there, there's no food in there, nothing will live nothing will adhere to the bottom of your boat if you choose this solution. So there's many different types of mooring, as we all know, um, whether that's um, uh, with a, a jetty like this or a dock like this, finger mooring, swing mooring, all sorts. This type of system will work on a swing mooring. You can't say the same for some of the other dry dock solutions, but we'll see some of those examples in a moment. Of course with this one there's nothing mechanical, there's nothing electrical in it and we all know when there's nothing electrical, nothing mechanical, there's really not much to go wrong with it. So it is what you see, um, very simple, I think this one is an inflatable, there are other versions that come in foam uh, and both work just the same, the same principles. So that makes excellent value and a fraction of the price of a dry dock solution if you were to look at a dry dock um, option. So let's start talking about the dry dock solutions and what they are. So let's come on to dry docking and I think your choice of dry docking, there are many options of course and it depends on the size of your boat, whether you want to move your boat from place to place, how much money you want to spend on dry docking, the, the options are many folks, so we're going to have a look at, at those. If your boat is very small and you want to move your boat from place to place, to, you know, from rivers to sea to wherever, lakes, trailer. I'd say a trailer every time, that's probably the best one, it's not going to cost you any money, it doesn't cost you maintenance, so I would go with that, that would be my opinion. If you're boat is much bigger of course it's not feasible to put it on a trailer especially if you want to move it around a lot but that's a you know something you need to, to think about and whether you go with a fixed dry dock system or put it in a boat yard like the, the boat yard behind me now that can be costly because you're probably putting it in there for at least a good half of the year so you need to consider the cost of the of the upkeep of the storage and there's yeah, warehouse storage as well so you could go to something like that but the choice is yours really but if you didn't want to go with that you want to keep your boat in the water technically but have it on some sort of boat lift then let's take a look at some of the options there on how much money you've got to spend on this but they do come in different brands and you know shapes and sizes of course there is a typical boat lift that you can have now the cost of this is high and you would have to look into this yourself and of course you do need electrical um, power to actually generate the lift you could be talking 20 to 30 thousand dollars for this type of solution again dependent on your boat size 
Um, and of course, if you go with something like a boat lift, for example, if you're putting your boat in, in water, say the, your house, in the, in the rear of your house, and it's uh, going to be there permanently, basically. If you're thinking of moving house or moving location, it's probably not the thing for you. But if you know you're going to be there for some time to come, then it's certainly worth that type of money to invest in it. It does require experts to install it, so you will have that installation cost on top of it. And of course, anything that is electrical or anything that is mechanical does require maintenance. Another dry docking solution is the flotation system. Like the one you see behind me, uh, you can see barrels probably that fill up with water to lower it in. So the boat comes to, to water, like ready to sail off. And then it transfers to have air in it to actually lift it up. So it's this sort of you know, up and down system. You do need experts to install this type of uh, system into the water as well. And of course they are higher in price than the average boat owner. Um, but of course some people may actually think it's, it's cheap and well within their means and that's absolutely fine. Uh, but of course again electrics, mechanics are all involved here so you would need to think about that. And I guess as well you need to have a think about the aesthetics of how it looks to you. It's personal choice whether you think that is suitable for your berth and the area where you want to have it or whether you want to go for something that's more discreet and more at water level. Alternatively, you could go with a hard plastic floating dock or platform. Um, so we've got one here and as you can see it's like cubes of hard plastic that are joined together in a in a pattern uh, with a, an area in the middle and this is where the uh, boat is pulled up, driven up or steered up onto this and it rests on top. An excellent solution but again really quite costly uh, and as it's bulky again it has to have special shipment uh, and might depend on the, the um, mooring uh, situation that you're trying to um, contend with. Not real um, maintenance issues on this one but I guess um, does it last within the sun, the heat of the sun? There are reports um, that insurance might get affected with this one because the boat does have to come up onto it. So any issues with the bottom of the hull and implications on your insurance, you would need to check that out. So I would seriously recommend that. So to conclude this, this brief uh, tour of the different types of systems that you can have, and of course, as I said, they come in many different brands. We weren't going to go into that in this, but it does depend on whether you want to complete a complete dry docking solution or whether you want to go uh, with a more pragmatic and uh, cheaper underwater hull cover that performs exactly the same function. It is up to you. They both have the same end result. Uh, just one involves a greater financial commitment. So I hope this review has been helpful in giving you a bit of an insight into the different types of systems that are around and giving you a view of the things to think about when you're trying to weigh up one option with another and to help you think about how much you want to spend or you know, how much financial commitment you want to put into this, this um, solution. So hopefully helpful to you and thank you for watching.